Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today is the day 26 for our PCNSA series. So I've already completed all the type of NAT, what we can configure in Palo Alto Firewall. So the NAT topic is completely done. Now we are moving into application ID. Okay. So in this particular video, we are going to understand what is application ID, app ID in short form. How does Palo Alto identify as an app? Okay. What is application shift? And what is application dependency? These are actually uh, interview questions that is being asked in the interview. So I'll request you to please watch this video till the end so that you can understand all these concepts and it will be very much helpful once you configure app ID. Basically, this concept will give you a confidence to understand what you're configuring and how you have to basically configure app id okay so also i will request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me so without any further delay let's get started so friends first of all we'll understand what is app id which is nothing but application identification so with the help of this particular image we'll try to understand okay now what is app id let's try to understand with this particular example okay now in traditional firewalls whenever we create policy right when we, when we create policy how how we create policy will define the source ip address We'll define the destination IP address and the port number, let's say 53, which is DNS traffic. Now, when we are sending the traffic on DNS 53 on port number 53, which is expected to allowed by the particular firewall, which is fine. But if somebody is sending a bit torrent traffic on port number 53 as the traditional firewall does not understand the application it basically allows the traffic which is is not expected nowadays right because there are a lot of mechanism which we can use to send BitTorrent traffic or any other traffic through port number 53. So if I was looking for port number 53 or verifying only the port number 53, it basically doesn't work. So I'll just give you an example in industry. What they do is they will try to do this 192, 168, 10.1 port number 3001. So let's say to check whether this particular port is open or not. I am sending a telnet traffic on port number 3001, right? Actually, the telnet port number is 23, but I'm te sending telnet traffic on port, uh, 3001, 3001. So I'm sending telnet traffic on 3000 port number one, which is not a correct way to check basically. Okay. So now if i consider a palo alto firewall with app id if i allow dns traffic which is on port number 53 it actually allows dns traffic but if you're sending a telnet traffic on port number 53 or http traffic on port number 3 or bit torrent traffic on port number 3 it basically does not allow so it basically understands how a DNS packet looks like. What is the header parameters in DNS? So he understands those information. So app ID is basically identifying those. Uh, so basically app ID is a way to identify applications right so how it basically identifies let's try to understand okay so friends let's understand how palo alto identifies an application 
right with the help of these particular images on this packet captures or this flow we are going to understand how it identifies an application okay now whenever the traffic basically received by Palo Alto firewall first of all it identifies by application signature so if I say application signature application signature is nothing but how an application works okay so if I talk about this is a sample of an telnet traffic and this is a sample of an HTTP traffic now if you see the telnet traffic in telnet traffic what is the first thing that happens when you log in or when you telnet to a device it basically asks for username and password right so this is the behavior of a telnet traffic so it basically goes to a device and it is asking for username and password this is the behavior same way if i try to go to an http uh, website or try to get or try to access an http uh, server so in that particular case i will send a get request and i will get a response of that particular get request so what does it mean so i want to get a website like packetlive.net and i have got a response from the server now there is a difference between a telnet traffic and http traffic so Polo Alto understands that particular difference that in telnet this is how the traffic flow will be and in http this this will be the uh, this is how the traffic flow will be okay so this is how it basically understands or with the help of their behavior it understands what kind of application it is right after that identify known protocol decoder so let's say for an example if he does not found anything from application signature so in his database if he doesn't found any application signature then in that case let's say http or https it works on port number 80 or it works on port number 33 so with the help of this port number he'll try to predict what kind of traffic it is okay so for an example if i talk about facebook okay now facebook is known application and it is popular application so let's say it's a newly created and app Paul Alto does not know about it so when we try to access facebook basically it goes through https for an example so if he does not understand facebook at least he can understand it is a https traffic so by seeing the port number he can at least predict what kind of port number with the port number he'll try to predict what exactly it is http smtp ssh telnet whatever it is right so with the help of protocol the layer 4 port numbers he'll try to predict what kind of uh, application it is right if with the help of that protocol decoder he is unable to find out then it goes for a historics behavior now let's try to understand so let's say for an example i am assuming a torrent okay torrent is a kind of a peer to peer application right in peer to peer application there will be no servers so let's say for an example if you have a file okay in your pc you can basically send that particular file to another PC and to another PC like that. So there is no server in it, but I'm exchanging my file to uh, in that particular network. I'll be sharing that particular file to all those PC who whoever joins that particular network. They basically get that particular file, right? Now it's a torrent. So it's a well-known popular application. Everyone knows it. I have created a new application which is named as ABC something like this ABC application and it works exactly like peer to peer communication now as 
we cannot identify with the signature because it will not match with any existing signature okay it will not match with torrent because it is torrent has a different servers right it communicates to different server and it uses different random ports numbers with the po protocol decoder he uh, if uh, it, because it uses a different port set of port number so Paulo Alto does not able to understand. Now, by seeing the behavior, whether it looks like a peer-to-peer, client-to-server, or how it is, how that particular application behavior it. Now, it basically correlates whether with any existing application work like this. So he will just tag it. He he will not be sure that this application is like that only. but by seeing this particular behavior like uh, the packet exchange for that particular application he'll try to tag it as is it a peer to peer communication where it's a client to server communication or how it is or it can be a social media website whether it can be a web conferencing website like that he'll try to predict what kind of behavior or what kind of packets which gets exchanged in this so he'll just tag that application like that okay and finally if he is unable to understand in that case he'll say it's unknown traffic so he will attempt three times first signature by seeing the database then with a the port number and by correlating the behavior of it okay and then if it is not there then in that case it will be an unknown traffic okay now friends let's understand what is application shift and what is application dependency with the help of this particular diagram we'll try to understand that okay now if you see in this particular diagram first we'll talk about application shift in application shift what exactly the concept is let's say if a client is talking to the server right now first what happens first of all the tcp handshake happens right so that session will start with tcp session first so it will recognize as a tcp connection after that the tcp connection it can be udp connection it can be i'm just taking a example of tcp connection okay then that particular session will try to connect to some http s or http or any other protocol okay it uses or it basically on that particular port number let's say it it is an http traffic okay now that tcp will become an http traffic so from tcp to http traffic so that what exactly that is a application shift okay after that the connection is going to a facebook.com for an example so facebook so the transition happen from http to and facebook now once the facebook once you log into the facebook it basically after that in facebook there are so many applications are there okay for an example you have application uh, facebook games you have facebook videos you have facebook chat you have facebook rooms there are so many other things which is inside that facebook okay so now after that now facebook will become all this applications so the more the traffic will flow between the client and the server will try to understand the polo alto will try to understand more about that particular traffic right so there is a transition from tcp to http from http to facebook from facebook to other application which is running under facebook so that is called application shift over here now let's understand application dependency now let's say for an example if i want to access facebook.com 
now as you can see this transition now let's say this http itself is not allowed there is a block rule which is been written or it's not been allowed for an example so my facebook will not work in this particular case so it is basically dependent on this fine so the facebook is dependent on http traffic if http is not there means my facebook will not work now what is dependency how exactly it works how to configure that we are going to see in the next video guys okay i'll go more deeper because in next uh, video i'll be explaining about an application how exactly it looks like how can you find it out how to configure it we are going to cover because as i have to divide the app id into two parts this is the part 1 okay and in the second part we are going to do the configuration we are going to understand the application all these things so this is just an introduction and understanding the concept behind app id okay if i take both the parts it will the video will become too lengthy that is the reason i have divided into two parts okay so this is what i wanted to cover in this particular video thank you so much for watching till then and i'll see you in the next thank you so much and also i'll request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon thank you guys see you in the next